All right, so we're gonna talk about getting and venting your wax. Um, so I have a couple of, three few waxes that I just dropped there that I'm gonna do some gating and venting on. And, ah, I'm getting closer. Um, keep them out of the way for the moment. I wanna talk about the flasks that we're gonna be using and how you have to um, work with them. So this one's solid and this one's perforated. Um, yeah. Um, so this one is used with the, the vacuum casting um, machine and this one is used with a centrifuge machine. Although, in a sense, it could also be used without, like they, you could also just deal with gravity um, kind of casting um, where you don't have, the centrifuge uses centrifugal force to pull the metal um, into the mold um, cavity and the vacuum uses vacuum pressure to pull the mold into the, into the vacuum ca um, cavity. So these are both um, different, that's why. Um, so it depends on, um, probably I'm gonna try to do as much vacuum casting because uh, I have more luck with that. Um, but one thing about these these things, the bottoms of these, these are what you're gonna gain and vent onto. Um, and these have these nubs there that are designed that are designed to fit a, uh, uh, essentially a, a crucible um, for a centrifuge. Um, so if you're making one of these to be in a centrifuge, you wanna make sure you have this button and you wanna make sure you don't get too much wax, everything all over it. It should fit well. If it doesn't fit this well, the, bron the molten metal kind of goes wherever it wants to. Um, so it has to fit well and lock in there really well. So having that shape match up with that really helps. Um, anyway, the other type, of, so that's a crucible for a centrifuge. This is where the metal gets melted into with a torch. Um, the other type looks like this. And when we're using the vacuum one, um, we'll melt it in this and just pour it right in the top. So that has less problems of, you know, you still want a cup to pour into, but it's less problematic than if it doesn't fit because you're not locking it together and spinning it around. So what these are for, bring you in closer, even closer still, um, are we gonna build your piece? So with this, by the way, with one that's this size, this large, I can get a couple of pieces in there, okay? One or two, maybe even three. Um, if you're just doing one little thing, you might use a little flask like this. I was just gonna do this little guy, one in there. Um, and again, you wanna make sure before you build on here, make sure you find the flask that works with it and that you can get it on. Because if you see, you're gonna build that on there, build the wax form on there, and then you're gonna put this on. So if you're trying, if this takes a lot of force, this one's kind of tight. Um, I might look around for one better than that, but what I'm doing here, I'd probably break the wax off of it. Um, so I kind of use a little tool, um, a magical butter knife or something. Um, to kind of go around and try to help me fit it onto there um, without knocking the wax around too much. Um, that can become problematic. Arr, arr. Yeah. Anyhow, I might even put that on there, leave it on there for a while, let it stretch it out. It should fit tight, um, and we'll put tape around it too to seal it, um, but it should, you know, you want to be careful, like some of these, this fits a little bit, I can put that on easier than, you know, so if that's there, I have a wax gentle thing there, I can kind of lay this carefully over the top and put it on, all right? You want to make sure that you're not going to knock all your venting or whatever you've done, your piece over when you do that. And here, and I'm not, I don't want to go all over this place, and I also want to clean this up a little bit. Um, I can put that in there to kind of, I can even use, I can use the <clears throat> soldering tool. Kind of seal that along a little bit. So I have a little nub. Now you can also, those are round, I can even take some of those um, round vents and just shove them right in there too, that little hole. So we've got our guys on here and we're gonna to start to um, vent them. So what I say about this is, well, many things, but um, a lot of times people will not vent at all. They'll rely on the vacuum or the centrifuge to push through, but 
I tend to like to vent. Um, air bubbles get trapped, so I want them to kind of, so everywhere where there's an, some major areas where like at least one on each of these, maybe a couple on him on this kind of thing. Um, but you want to be very careful not to destroy your piece. So the reason why people don't like the vent is because one, if they put that on there, that's something you have to clean off. So you want to make that a small connection. It's starting to break right there, but, um, and then I can take the hot tool. I'm going to take it and I'm right down to the edge of this cup. All right. So we're adding it on. I just gently tapped it with the hot tool. I don't want to damage my, 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 uh, actually I want it down here. If I put it here really close, it's going to get blocked. Sometimes these little areas and sometimes people call what's called a blind vent and that the air bubble will go in there and doesn't necessarily have to escape. Part of my, and again, a lot of times in jewelry, they don't necessarily use, um, jewelry cast, small casting like this. They won't use, they won't bother with vents. Um, I don't want to get too far because um, the centrifuge or vacuum will will do enough to kind of allow all the air and gases to escape um, so you don't end up with bubbles. Coming from a large, you know, doing larger metal casting, we always use sort of vents even when, you know, just to make sure, it, you know, that you get things clean. So bigger, complicated things, you want to have vents. Um, anyway, so I'm going to put a few more on. Um, and actually what I can even do is attach some across from, you know, kind of like connecting points um, so that the air has somewhere to go. But I like it to have, be able to escape um, as well. And, and again, this is, you know, the venting is more based off of traditional kind of gravity. Um, but it so far it hasn't hurt anything that I've done vacuum wise all right so um again we have our flask i'm gonna put that around there but before that i'll just i'm gonna go ahead you know we're gonna pour a um, plaster investment mixture liquid and it would flow out the holes so i'm going to if we're using one of these i'd make sure to seal like sometimes you can get away that's enough of a seal that connection is enough of a seal but a lot of times it leaks and also we're going to put it in a, if we use the vacuum when we cast it um, to get the air bubbles out, it'll definitely have issues, but so I'll wrap tape around there too. Um, but what I can do, clean this off better probably, what I should do. Um, and, wrap. and this is just duct tape, happens to be yellow. Now they also make rubber sleeves um, that you can use, but you want to make sure those don't leak. Now, the other thing is we want to go a little bit over the top of that. So I'm going to overlap on the bottom, but I'm going to have a little bit of a lip there. So that we can go all the way to the top. And there may be, when you're using the vacuum thing, it sometimes does all kinds of weird stuff. Um, so I want a little bit, half an inch or so. So I'll make sure that's nicely sealed up. Got a little messed up there. It's probably gonna leak still, but we'll get there. And then I carefully, carefully, I'll look at it from above, um, put it over the top of, like vent it. Well, I vented, you guys take a chance. There we go. And then I'll probably take some tape and wrap around the bottom, the bottom here too. And then we would be ready to invest it, um, which is mixed. This is a whole nother set of videos.